The government's plan to suspend three former conservative senators without pay is stalled tonight. And while the prime minister is blaming liberal senators for standing in the way, there are significant cracks emerging in Stephen Harper's own caucus. Cracks, too, in Harper's account of who knew what when. As Harper said for the first time today, that Nigel Wright did tell a few people when he wrote that $90,000 check for Mike Duffy. Senior correspondent Terry Malefsky has the story for us tonight. Terry. Well, Peter, both houses of Parliament are still consumed by this. In the Commons, the Prime Minister was again battered by the opposition, and in the Senate, another Conservative stood up against the government's drive to kick out three of his colleagues. I have never voted against a government motion. For the first time, Senator Don Plett, a Conservative loyalist from Manitoba, opposed his party. It's very, very dangerous, especially when we take away the benefits from these people. And, uh, you know, Senator Duffy is a heart patient, uh, Senator Wallen is a post-cancer uh, post patient, and uh, Senator Brazil has a young family, and to take away their benefits, to take away their, uh, their livelihood, I don't think is fair. It's not open for all to see. Conservatives saying no also includes Senator Hugh Siegel and, although he won't get a vote, Edmonton MP Peter Goldring. I'm standing here to say that both the suspension and the uh, loss of pay is in this fashion is an affront to their rights. Still, most Conservatives insist that the three Senators must go. The resounding point of view was how do these people sit there and collect their salaries? The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. But in the Commons, the Opposition Leader was again playing prosecutor and forcing the Prime Minister to change his story. After firing Nigel Wright, the Prime Minister told Canadians in this House that absolutely no one else, not a few, no one else knew about the deal between Duffy and Wright. Now he admits that top Conservatives actually did know about the scheme, but they kept him in the dark knowingly and they allowed him to make false statements to Parliament. Once again, Mr. Speaker, I addressed that matter months ago. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Wright made this decision. He has been very clear. He informed very few people. So it's gone from none to a few. How many is a few? <laughs> the right member, Prime Minister. Once again, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Mr. Wright has been very clear in that in his court, in his court filings. He's been very clear on all of the facts. Mulcair didn't get much further, but he had the last laugh. When Harper said the real solution for the Senate is... It is to have them elected so they are accountable to the Canadian. How's that going, the elected Senate? <laughs> so this continues to be a feast for the opposition. And the government's bid to give those three senators the boot is stalled. It may not even come to a vote until the middle of next week, Peter. All right, Terry, thank you. Terry Molesky in Ottawa tonight. Well, the government's plan to reform how senators are selected and how long they sit has been rejected by the Quebec Court of Appeal. It declared that Ottawa cannot act without the approval of at least seven provinces representing 50% of the population. This case arose when Quebec's former Charest government filed a motion last year seeking an opinion on the proposed legislation. The Harper government submitted a reference of its own to the Supreme Court of Canada, with some ministers saying they hoped the court would rule on it Quickly, I asked Chief Justice Beverly McLaughlin whether the High Court feels pressured on Absolutely timing. Absolutely none. As I said at the Canadian Bar this summer, I was asked a similar question. I said, these are complicated, important questions. They're important not only for now, but they're important for the future of this country. And we are going to take whatever time is required to answer them uh, to the best of our ability uh, uh, and as we feel they should be answered under the Constitution.